Today's video is going to be a quick tip and what we're going to talk about today is something that probably many of you have not experienced until recent years and that's of course the autoplay feature that's built into Captivate. By its very default nature Captivate will automatically start running your e-learning project within a browser when you're using a desktop computer. However as we start to publish more and more of our e-learning courses for mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets, we're beginning to see this screen here. And this is um, the playback controls or the, uh, the user uh, interaction that's required to play back your content essentially on a web page. Uh, the reason for this is that when uh, both Apple developed iOS and Android or Google developed the Android uh, uh, OS. They decided to make it more difficult for content to automatically run within a browser window for the protection, of course, of the users of these devices. Uh, and that unfortunately means e-learning as well. So you're going to see a screen like this with a play button. Not a big deal. Most people can figure out how to bypass this just by tapping on that play button and into the course that they go. But, you know, all this effort has been made to create an e-learning design that, you know, you're proud of. And then to be confronted by this white screen with a very plain play button there is an opportunity for you to improve that. Let me show you how you do that. So we're going to go into our preferences window. You can do this by selecting the edit drop down menu and going down to preferences. Alternatively, you can shift F8 and this will bring up the preferences window. We're looking for the category of project and the subcategory start and end. Now by default, auto play is going to be checked off. And again, on a Windows machine or a Mac OS computer, this isn't a problem. But on a mobile device, this, uh, this feature doesn't really function. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to uncheck auto autoplay. And then we're going to browse to an image that I've prepared. Now, I did this in Photoshop. I took one of the images that I was using for this project and simply put a message on the screen uh, using uh, one of the fonts that I'm using in this project. Uh, with a simple message, click the play button to begin, just so that there's a little bit more of a design involved, but also a very simple instruction for our users. So I'm going to browse to that image. We'll import that. Uh, I've saved it to my desktop. There it is. We'll click on OK, and we'll see what this looks like in an HTML5 preview. So again, a, a much better way to start your course with an image that, of course, is reflective of the design and effort that's gone into your e-learning project. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.